Well, a new report out by LendingTree finds Americans took on an average 1200 bucks of debt this holiday season. At first glance, it may seem imprudent, but with today's historic inflation rates and the low interest rates, could that actually make some sense? Here to break it down is David Bonson, the Bonson Group managing partner. David, great to see you. I think this is a prime example of something we call perverse incentives. When you have high inflation and very low interest rates, you borrow money, you go into debt, but you pay it off in deflated dollars. So eventually you end up ahead, right? Well, I think that that is true mathematically. I think that what this also helps reinforce is the silly idea that, oh, we're worried about the consumer. No, there's nothing to worry about with the That's consumer. The pent up demand is so much larger than anyone anticipated because they shut down the economy for a year. And then everyone is surprised that when they reopen it, people want to spend money, go out, buy toys, buy gifts, all of those things. I think even more, David, than the inflation aspect here is the supply side that we don't have enough production, but we have plenty of consumption. Yeah. And that's what the story post COVID is. We need supply side help in the economy. But I just want to talk for the moment about how distorting it is to have higher inflation and, and low interest. When you had the lo we've had low interest rates now for a long time, but we haven't had high inflation with the, with the pickup in inflation. You get all these perverse effects. I mean, this is just one of them. By the way, I'm wondering if anybody uh, big time spenders are making in investment bets based on this. You, you borrow a lot of money and, and then you pay it off in deflated dollars and you end up ahead. Uh, Americans might do it at a small level, but investors could do it in, in millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. The, the pushback I'd give there is that investors clearly don't believe that the inflation is going to be long term because the bond market is still holding True. down at 1.4 percent. I think, though, you're right that the incentive to borrow at cheap cost of capital. But see, when you talk about a thousand dollars of debt over the holiday season, that's a small scale version of what we see on a large scale with the whole housing market. That that's really boosting up asset prices because people can leverage that household planning on inflated prices as well. So I, I agree. I think that this is endemic of the perverse incentive structure we're dealing with. An another uh, dark cloud that I just want to focus on. I don't want to be too dark about 2022 because it could be a great year. But the IPOs that came out in, in 2021, uh, two thirds of them are underwater. That is, they're, they're lower now than their initial price offering. Is, is that a problem to you? Well, it's a problem for the people who bought them, and, and, and it's, <laughs> yes. a pro it, it, it's a problem, David, for those who don't understand that the shiny object idea of investing, buying the hot new thing, whether it's crypto or IPOs or SPACs or those hot tech stocks, even apart from IPOs, look at the so-called work-from-home stocks from last year, your Zooms, your DoorDashes, your Pelotons, they've gotten crushed. And nobody's even talking about it. And so I think it's a problem for those who have not properly calculated risk. It's a good time for people's equity portfolio to be in line with good fundamentals and reasonable valuations. Are we going to have uh, more of the same in, in 2022 very quickly with the IPOs that uh, they eventually lose their steam? The yeah, IPOs are going to have to slow down because they're not going to get the same valuations. And then what I think happens next is FANG is the next to start to come down wow. because of high valuation. All right. David Bonson, great to see you. Very happy new year to you. May it be very prosperous for you. Stay with us. More Cudlow straight ahead.